Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. Let me start by communicating my honor and greetings to His Excellency, the Governor, and Her Excellency. Thank you so much. And um, all protocols duly observed. I bless the Lord for this privilege. And I trust that the moments that we have to share would be most profitable in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father, thank you. Thank you for your grace. The Bible declares that the entrance of your word giveth light and even understanding to the simple. We have come to learn. We have come to increase in knowledge. And I pray that you will grant us access to the truths of the kingdom and let our lives show in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that whilst you do this, you will continually lift this state. That Akwaibom will become a sign and a wonder in this nation and even to the nations of the earth. That you are a people that have been marvelously helped of God. In Jesus' name I pray. I must take a minute or two to sincerely commend this entire prayer project. I was very humbled when I got to find out that this is a sacrifice that without fail happens in this state. It is, it is not something to just sweep under the carpet. The Bible is very intentional about what happens to a people and leaders who are very vocal about God. In fact, the Bible says this about Uzziah. He said that for as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. Hallelujah. And so I truly want to commend His Excellency for the courage. I believe it takes a lot of that to see to it that this project continues to happen and so the lord honor you and also appreciate all who have stood by him on this wise in the name of jesus i'm teaching very briefly on the subject of prevailing prayer um, i believe that prayer has to be taught for believers to effectively pray we are a people of prayer we are a nation of prayer africa is a continent of prayer but i submit to you that with reference to the intelligence that scripture provides most people have not been able to contend for the kind of prayer that produces results we see this in the life of the disciples they were first disciples of john before a number of them became the disciples of jesus and they noticed that there was a way and a manner that jesus prayed that made him to have results and so in their frustration they opened up to him and they said teach us to pray you find that in luke chapter 11 from verse 1 teach us to pray this was not an issue of prayerlessness this was an issue of unprofitable resultless prayer they were not prayerless people they noticed that there was a way they approached prayer that didn't produce results. And so they beckoned on Jesus and said, teach us to pray like John also taught his disciples. Hallelujah. So prayer can be taught. Uh, the consolation for the believer in prayer is that you are confident that in prayer you will receive and not just that you receive but it will be made manifest it is my considered opinion that no believer will truly become and remain prayerless if you know how to get results in prayer because nobody leaves what works is that true the prayerlessness of many believers is an attestation to the frustration that many have received in an attempt to communicate with this God who has um, communicated his love and his desire to reach down to people, we pray using all kinds of formulas. And sadly for many believers, it's become a ritual that does not have any potency and any results. So my assignment within the moments that we have is for us to look deeper from God's word to help construct our understanding about the kind of prayer that works are we together for reference let's look at james chapter 5 i'll begin my reading from verse 13 and then we'll end at 18. james chapter 5 he said is any among you afflicted let him pray so up front the bible the scriptural recommendation for affliction is prayer 
that every time you find out that things are going in your life as it shouldn't be the biblical recommendation to manage that situation is to pray is any one of you afflicted the bible says let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms to 18 now he said is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord then it says the prayer of faith shall save the sick so prayer can save you see the character of prayer demonstrated here prayer is not an empty spiritual exercise it sustains the power to save in this case the sick but it is not only the sick that prayer saves prayer has the character of salvation are we together it says and if he had committed any sins they shall be forgiven him i plead that we read verse 16 together if you can see it ready it says confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed now my point of emphasis one to read the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much let's just pause here for a moment he's giving us a very interesting information number one that whoever prays this prayer has to be a righteous man and then it says the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much in terms of its delivery in terms of the result that it produces now you see the character of scripture is that every time god presents a thought he does not leave you in confusion as to the dynamics of the idea he's presenting usually he will look for an individual in scripture who personifies his idea and force you to understudy that individual to become the reference for understanding that thought are we together so if he's teaching you on prayer just leaving you in the dark as to this might not bring thorough understanding the next verse now is god buttressing on the point and he uses an individual to personify his idea in this case elijah that means Elijah is the personification of all that has been said now. If you study Elijah and the character of his approach to prayer, you would learn something from it that will make your prayer effectual. Is God helping us already? He says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. So he already takes away any superstition around Elijah. He's telling you that Elijah was framed with the, with the limitation that comes with the fallen man. Nothing spectacular to him, he says. And then the Bible says, yet he accessed his secret and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. What a man so the power of that result was not necessarily the man but an understanding he had he approached prayer in a way that produced a global result this is what the bible is saying not just a state result not just a regional result that one man from one point accessed a secret in prayer and he engaged that secret and the whole earth was affected by the quality of his understanding about prayer next verse the Bible says he prayed again. Please say after me, again. Again means mastery. Again means you are not trying to learn the principles. You have held it. Anything you cannot reproduce, again and again, you have not gained mastery. And you see, the idea of God in building the saints is to bring us to a point where we gain mastery over the things of the kingdom. It was Paul who was speaking to his son in the gospel, Timothy. He says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. It is not God's desire for us to continue to shadow box over spiritual principles in hope that one will walk. God wants us to gain thorough understanding. And by the way, may I tell you sincerely from the word of God that you can gain mastery in handling the truths of the kingdom with the mastery of a chef with the mastery of a consultant with the mastery of an architect you can hold on to these truths of the kingdom and they can become predictable in your life 
he prayed again meaning he was not in confusion as to what he did the first time he prayed again and the bible says and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit back to our context the fervent and effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much as seen in the life of elijah who prayed and the heavens were shut over a territory and he prayed again and the heavens were open praise the name of the lord in luke chapter 11 we looked at that a few minutes ago from verse 1 and it is to verse 10 i may not have the time to talk in details but now verse 1 this this is uh, the disciples were asking jesus to teach them to pray then he began his discourse on the subject of prayer we may not touch this but let me just read we're reading verse 2 we'll end at 10 verse 2 he said unto them when ye pray say now I, I may just maybe make a comment or two as we pass but uh, my, my focus is really verse 9 and 10 he says when you pray this should be your understanding um it was not just about reciting this like a chant there was an understanding behind it he says when you approach god you must approach him as father the word father is from the word abba it means your source your sustainer your protector your defender you do not approach god as though they were an alternative he said this must be your construct as you approach him in prayer for as long as you have an alternative you cannot secure god's participation his jealousy will not allow you to put him alongside any other thing our father number two he said which art in heaven that means it will require faith in prayer because he's in a realm that is not physical are you getting the idea now he's telling you that this father you are dealing with he resides in a realm and a dimension that will require an agency to connect with him this is where faith comes in number three he said hallowed be your name that means approach him with the spirit of reverence do not allow the confidence you have based on the access he is given in christ to sponsor this honor he is still god even though he's your father so you approach him with the spirit of reverence hallowed be your name then next sentence is thy kingdom come it means in order of priority the context of your prayer should be that his governing authority be superimposed in your life and your territory do you know why because most of what you will be asking else are symptoms of a principal deficiency that his kingdom has not yet come that's why you even have to pray for daily bread that in order of priority if his kingdom meaning his culture his life his atmosphere the kingdom of God represents any sphere where his values are respected. That if his values are respected within that sphere, there are many other prayers you would not need to pray again. Many other prayer points are, they are, they are subsets of a principal deficiency. So in as much as he is benevolent enough to respond to those smaller requests, his ultimate desire is that his kingdom would come and he tells you how his kingdom comes by his will being done that everywhere the will of the father is allowed to find expression his kingdom comes so to ask his kingdom to come means to allow to permit his will to be done what is his will his will represents his intent for you and the bible is already clear that god is a good god he does not think evil of us i know the thoughts that i think towards you jeremiah 29 and verse 11 thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end by that understanding it sponsors our confidence in asking for his will because our interest is captured in his will when we are afraid to ask for the will of god is proof we don't trust him are we learning that your will be done in earth notice he never said let it be done on earth he says in earth that first earth being you the earthen vessel so the will of god be done in this earth and then my territory not just earth like the territory you the earth the earthen vessel verse 3 it says give us this day our daily bread this is a revelation of the character of god 
that in his benevolence he's so meticulous he pays attention to you per day give us this day he knows that supplies must be consistent give us this day our daily bread do you know what this means i wish i had the time daily bread does not just mean food bread means every provision that makes for your survival so daily bread can mean the connections that will keep you moving it does not always mean food bread has the character of keeping you alive so in this prayer you are saying lord you have given me a blank day and you are the only one who knows what it takes for this day to be fruitful so give me my daily bread means coordinate to be within my reach all that it will take for my efficiency this is prayer now next verse forgive us our sins and he leaves you with an understanding for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us do you know what this means it means that for as long as you are alive on a daily basis there will always be someone hurting you and it says that while you obtain forgiveness let the forgiveness of christ towards you always be a reminder that like he has done so for you you must leave a space in your heart to reach out to people next verse are we still together media verse 6 okay no verse 5 now he said unto them which of you shall have a friend now you see the character of scripture again he's taught something on prayer but he now wants to personify that idea in a story the story is my is my point of emphasis <clears throat> he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go to him by midnight and say to him friend lend me three loaves verse 6 for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and i have nothing to set before him and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give thee understand the context someone outside is about to be embarrassed shame and reproach seems imminent on someone who is outside and he's beckoning on help you can see that it takes humility to pray because prayer demands that you come into a point where you know that unassisted you cannot help yourself the highest demonstration of humility is prayer that every time you pray it stems from an understanding that i am unable to help myself unassisted this is the story here and so he said look i i need supplies but that supplies is not within my reach it is with you and the man within says do not disturb me by reason of timing i am asleep wait and he's showing you what prayer can do he from within shall say trouble me not for the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give thee eight i say unto you jesus is speaking though he will not rise and give him a quiet bomb because of his importunity the word importunity means persistence his staying power and determination yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him how much as many the man was only asking for three loaf but he said the energy that comes from what he's doing can move beyond three loaves to as many as he needs this is prayer are we learning he will give him as many as he needed so prayer is very powerful it is able to produce results verse 9 let's read to 10 and i say unto you ask and it shall be given to you amplified says ask and keep asking and it shall be given to you seek and you shall find it says knock and it shall be open unto you here is the spiritual law that governs prayer verse 10 for everyone please say everyone the advantage of prayer is not for preachers 
the advantage of prayer is not for a particular race there are regions that have certain things that may seem to be an advantage for them but that prayer can set everyone on common ground to receive it says for everyone that asketh receive it and he that seeketh find it and to him that knocketh it shall be open that means if you do not receive it is because you didn't ask you may say i verbalize my intention asking is more than verbalizing your intention 